ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू वी ऑफन हियर अबाउट विभूति एंड ऑल्सो स्वामी मेटेरियलाइजिंग विभूति एंड ऑल्सो ऑन स्पेशल अकेशन लाइक दशहरा एंड बर्थडे स्वामी डूइंग अभिषेकम विद विभूति ऑन शिरडी बाबा स्टैच्यू सो विभूति इज वेरी वेल नोन टू ऑल ऑफ अस let us know few points relating to this vibhuti vibhuti is the gift of grace that sri satsai baba gives his devotees it appears in his down turned arm after a few circular motions of his arm and hand he offers it into the outstretched palm of his devotees or puts it into their mouths or applies to their foreheads with his thumb it is an off white powder and most fine ash having a slight fragrance vibhuti has a strong spiritual significance the word vibhuti means a divine attribute it is often seen besmeared on the person of lord shiva being ash it is a symbolic reminder that ash is the stage into which all matter will ultimately break down in a sense all the spiritual attributes will one day deconstruct to a stage of attributelessness as well so when baba gives vibhuti he indirectly hints that the end product of all things material is vibhuti or ash The vibhuti given by Baba is potent with healing power and has the ability to bestow upon the receiver divine grace. In Indian tradition, vibhuti is offered in places of worship as prasadam or consecrated material, just as holy water is offered in a Christian church. The Sai Baba of Shirdi offered all visitors to his seat at Dwarka Mai. ash from a fire that he always kept alive he called this ash udi u d i and it had healing powers when sri satsai baba first started materializing vibhuti he often mentioned that it was the same udi from the shirdi fire receivers often felt a strange warm sensation in their palms as they received the vibhuti as though it had come from dying ember during festivals many devotees had witnessed vibhuti emerging from the forehead of satya sai baba many times when he went into a trance vibhuti would appear on his person today devotees from all around the world offer vibhuti to other devotees after formal prayer session in their homes and sri satya sai baba centers There are also confirmed reports of vibhuti emerging from photographs and idols kept in shrines in many homes of Sai devotees around the world. Sai devotees generally accept this phenomenon of vibhuti manifestation as an act of grace bestowed upon the devotee by Baba. This is the significance of vibhuti about which we need to have an understanding. until then baba had not made such an utterance like what he spoke to digambara swami correcting him instructing him to wear clothes not to crave for name and fame and that he would take care of his essential needs of life the teenager sai baba was no longer a fledgling he had taken on the role of the chastising father the loving mother and the wise guru He had come out of the shackles of household life and had begun to address humanity. The message of the young master had echoed the message of all the grand masters of yore. Surrender yourself and I assure you that I will take care of you. The vision of the young Sai Baba had emerged clearly to uplift humanity from its degenerated slumber. and restored back to man the awareness of his last divine status 
in his emphatic advice to Digambar Swami, Sai Baba had demonstrated one important thing for all who had eyes to see and ears to hear. He made it known loud and clear that his mission had begun. Early in 1944, probably the 24th January, Baba visited the city of Bangalore for the first time. He would have gone by bullock cart up to Bagepalli, stayed at Paragodu village and then proceeded to Bangalore by bus. This was his first major trip outside Puttaparthi since the Grand Declaration. D. N. Krishnamurti would recall Baba's early visits to Bangalore. So this is the narration by D. N. Krishnamurti. Baba visited Bangalore for the first time in February 1944 and stayed for 8 to 10 days in Rama Rao's house near Lal Bagh. Lal Bagh gardens are very famous as you know. Both Karanam Subbamma and Kamalamma accompanied him on this trip. During this visit, he also visited our house on Cavalry Road. One or two months later, he visited Bangalore once again. Shamanna's son, Ramaswamy of Indiranagar, would remember Sai Baba visiting and staying at his parents' house in Bangalore. Shamanna, who was then working in Ram Kumar Mills, he borrowed his employee's car to bring Baba to their house. When he went to Bangalore, in February 1944, he wore a striped shirt and a dhoti. One day he suddenly said, I don't want to wear this. One Srinivasan brought a few pieces of dhoti, tied light lemon yellow and had a long jubba, a loose collarless shirt made. Such a dress design was called Madanapalli jubba in those days. Very soon, Baba gave up his jubba and dhoti. Yadalam Venkata Ramanappa from Bukapatnam may have designed the first robe for Baba. It was light grey in colour and not of full length. The dress went through further transformation to full sleeve, body length, light yellow or sometimes half white robe buttoned at the neck, extending down to the heels. This was reminiscent of the kafni worn by Shirdi Sai Baba. Shanta Krishnamurti recalls the occasion when Baba visited her house on one of those early trips to Bangalore. It was a few months after they had visited Puttaparthi. This is the narration by Shanta Krishnamurti. Swami suddenly visited our house on third main road, Shamara's paid in a horse-driven carriage without prior announcement, along with Satchanarayana, brother of Karanam Subbamma, at 11 o'clock in the morning. Karanam Kamalamma was then staying in our house. We knew that the train leaves Penagonda for Bangalore at 1.30 a.m. We have brought two masala dosha from the nearest restaurant and we were about to eat when Swami came. We were living in a small house then. We cleaned the house while he waited with no option but to offer the same masala doshas to him. I don't know if Swami first visited our house or the house of somebody else. During his subsequent visits too, we were still living in the same small house. We were worried about his security as he was a small boy. We used to make him stand on a table so that he could give darshan. Many people came for interview, private audience, and Swami used to sleep on the floor, but later we bought him a cot. He was always active, moving from house to house all day. Only an invitation was needed and Swami would be there. Swami used to write us letters twice a week. In one letter, he advised my father, Narayana Sharma, to change her house as it was not good for him. He said that there was graham, negative planetary influence on our house. My father tried to shift to a relative's house. Another letter came with the same message. 
We did not think then that it was a final notice. The following night, my father had a heart attack and died peacefully. Blessed with Swami's vision. When he died, he had a picture of Shirdi Sai, material by Swami, at his bedside. He also had Rudraksha, Japamala, with a copper pendant, and had images of Shirdi Baba on one side and Hanuman on the other side. He had this around his neck and keeping the pendant in the mouth, gulped some water and peacefully breathed his last. It was a state holiday festival of the royal family. This had happened on 11th July of 1944. When Swami had shown my father the vision of the Savataras, ten incarnations, in the Chitravati waters, earlier during his visit to Puttaparthi, my father had made Swami to promise to take care of his family. In keeping with his, Swami visited us immediately after my father's death. During the bereavement, tradition required us to conduct a ceremony each month for a year and then once each year. Brahmins were fed as a part of this ritual. On one occasion, Swami himself had the food as Brahmin, freshly bathed, clad in dhoti and with a blue towel over his body. What a wonderful narration, what a wonderful sequence of events mentioned by Chanta Krishnamurti. What a wonderful thing it is. Just think of it. Swami's earlier visit to Bangalore. We'll meet later Sairam for this session.